everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have Botanicum by Maria Trolle and I have my Derwent Inktense swatch chart. There were 28 new colors that were added to the Derwent Inktense set. I just released a video a few days ago showing you all of the new 28 colors and swatching them all out. They are some beautiful colors and they make a fantastic addition to the colors we already had. Now when I did that video, a few of you had let me know that I had only swatched 27 colors, but the one color that I did not swatch was the jungle green, so I went ahead and just added it down there. I am going to be putting them into order and then creating my own swatch chart and putting them all onto one swatch. But today in this video, I thought it would be fun to pull some of the colors from the new colors and color something in Maria Trolle's Botanicum. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, go ahead and pull out your Derwent pencils and your coloring book and we will get started. If you check the description box down below, you'll find links down there to my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like to find out more information about that, you can click the join button down below this video. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to color this bird. I love coloring birds and I've not colored one in a very long time. So I thought I would put some colors together. There is an index in the back of the book that tells you what kind of bird this is. This one is supposedly an American barn swallow, which is the actual name of it. If you check the back of the book, it will have the scientific name, but when I Google it, it comes up as an American barn swallow. I went and pulled up a picture and this bird actually works out perfectly because it has a lot of oranges and blues in it and a little bit of gray or like brownish grays but if you look at the new colors that were just added to the set we got a whole lot of shades of oranges so I'll be able to use a few of those we also have a couple blues here but we're gonna see what I can come up with I have pulled quite a few colors and I may not use every single one of them but I wanted to pull quite a few colors from the new colors that we just got so I'll go ahead and let you know what those are so that if you're following along you can pull the same colors if you have this set if you don't there are plenty of other colors that you can use that are from the original 72 set if you have those I have dark mink I have gold Persian red orange sorbet lapis blue denim I pulled violet blue because I thought this would look really pretty and put a little bit of a twist onto the lapis blue and then I did pull a few colors that I may or may not use I think I am going to need some of these brighter colors but these are from the 72 set and I pulled the antique white because I'm gonna need the white to blend into some of the other colors to lighten them up just a little bit I think and there are some areas on the bird that have a lot of white so I am going to to use that just to give the bird a few highlights and then I have golden yellow iris blue which is a lighter blue than what we have in the 28 new colors and then tangerine and then mid vermilion so let me go ahead and show you some of these colors actually on the swatch chart so here is the mid vermilion and I'm seeing a lot of that in the bird here is the tangerine here is the iris blue here's the golden yellow you could see it's a beautiful bright yellow, yellowish oranges color, and then of course the antique white. And then from the new colors, here's the denim, and then I have the lapis blue, and I'm using the violet blue. Here is the orange sorbet, the Persian red, the gold, and the dark mink. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my yellows and oranges. I'm gonna start at the face, and then I'm gonna work my way this way. But I did go ahead and grab lemon as well because I wanted to definitely be able to use more of the colors from the newer set. And I really want some pops of color in my bird. So I'm just gonna start laying these colors where I feel like they will look good. And I'm gonna start right up here in the front and I'm gonna add some of the lemon yellow and then maybe a little bit of gold in with that. And this area is really, really small so I won't be able to fit all of these colors in here, but I'm just blending them into each other. And then here on the outer part, I wanna go ahead and add a little bit of the orange sorbet. And then this section here I'm gonna do with the blues. Let me go ahead and start with the yellows and oranges down here. 
and I think I want a lot of my brighter yellow all back in here. This is the lemon. And then again, I'm just gonna go in order, adding the colors. My next lightest color is the golden yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit over here on this side, and then I'm going to add a little bit up here, and maybe blend a little bit down into here. The next color I have is the orange sorbet, and I'm gonna blend this color and pull it back just a little bit to blend into some of these other colors. And then I think right here in the front, I wanna go ahead and use the Persian red. This one's gonna be quite a bit darker, but I feel like I'm gonna need this one just to create that separation there between these two spaces. And I really wanna get this color down there. And this is going to go up into this part of the wings as well. And then I think when I get over here, I'm going to switch out to blue, but I wanna blend this up here just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down on this line and blend some of this color in over there. And then I think right here in the front, again, just to create some more depth, I'm going to add a little bit of the Persian red right in here, and then a little bit over here around his beak. And I have used all of those colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my water brush. I have my Derwent water brush. This is the number one, and I'm gonna need this one because it's got the super, super little small tip on it. And this area here is super, super small. And I do have a napkin here because after you go over all of your colors, you want somewhere to be able to brush your brush off. But to get your water brush to work, all you do is push down on here until you see the water. So now it's nice and wet. And I probably should grab a, grab a sheet of paper to put underneath here. Okay, so I've got a sheet of paper underneath there and I'm just gonna start at my lightest color here up at the front of the bird. And I'm gonna blend all of these colors into one another. And if I go over the darker colors, I'm gonna wipe off my brush so that I could come in here and blend out the lightest colors. Now remember, with the Derwent ink tents, this is an ink and it dries permanent. So you can come back and add more color and more layers and I'm definitely going to be doing that. So now I grabbed my number two brush because this area is a little bit bigger over here. And so I'm just gonna go over this again, starting at the lightest color into the darker colors. And I'm just blending all of this out and activating it. And you can see how bright and intense these colors get. I'm brushing off my brush and then I'm gonna come back here into the lighter colors and pull that into the darker ones. And then let's blend this a little bit better over here. And then I'm gonna go over this just a bit and pull that color down. Now after it's dry, I can go over that with another layer. But look how bright and gorgeous and vibrant those colors are. I grabbed my colors and I'm going to come back over this part. I think it should be pretty dry by now. I'm just gonna go over this with the lemon and blend these colors out just a little bit more, laying more color down there. Now I have the gold and I'm just going in order from lightest to darkest. Now the golden yellow and my orange, which is quite a bit darker. The orange sorbet, I think this one is. And then my darkest color, which is the Persian red. And I really just want to deepen the color all around here just to create extra depth. Now I think this should be dry, so let's come over here and do the same thing. This is my Persian red, and I'm gonna come up into here, and I'm just going in a circular motion to get this color down there. I'm gonna come all along the bottom, and then I think I want to just add a little bit of this down here. I have my orange sorbet, and I'm going backwards now with my colors. If you have a lighter color somewhere, you can come back with the darker color and lay them right on top and they will blend out very nicely. I'm just trying to blend these colors together so that we've got a nice smooth transition. Now I'm gonna pull these colors together and activate them with water. That is so pretty. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to this section here. And I decided to go with the smaller brush because I think it makes it a lot easier. Oh, I can't wait to add the blues and see how this looks after I've got a contrast of colors down here. I'm gonna go back over the lighter and then pull it down into here so we get a smoother transition. Oh my gosh, those colors are so pretty. Okay, so now I want this part here to be blue. Okay, so I have the colors that are the new colors and I added in white because I wanna be able to create some highlights here with the blues. And I don't have any blues that are super, super light, but I've got the lapis blue and the violet blue. And I do need another blue that is lighter. So I think I'm gonna use the iris blue. And this is from the older 72 colors we had. 
And I'm going to start with these and see what I can come up with. So I think I'm going to start down here with a little bit of white. And now I have the iris blue, and I'm going to add that right into the white. And then the lapis blue. Now the iris blue is from the colors we already had, and this lapis blue is a really pretty blue that we just got. It's in one of the new colors. And I don't want too much of the violet, I don't think, but I'm going to pull this down here just a little bit, just to create a little separation between this space and this space here. And I think I want to blend a little bit of white into there just to lighten up those colors just a little bit and pull this down just a little to blend those colors in so that I've got a little bit of a white highlight here but a blend of the colors at the same time. Then I have my iris blue and I'm gonna use this one down at the bottom right next to that white highlight. And then I'm gonna use my violet blue to blend into that just a bit and go up just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here with the violet blue and I'm gonna line this area here. And I'm going to add just a bit over here where I want the separation between these two spaces. And I'm coming down here with this color and I'm kind of just going in a back and forth motion here. Now I'm going to use my white to create a pop of highlight right here. Now let me see what happens when I go over this with the water and activate it. So I'm going to start where my lightest color is and I'm just going to blend that out and I'm going to go upward. I'm going to blend these colors together rather slowly because I do have a little bit of that white right there and then these darker colors over here. Now I'm gonna brush off my brush because I wanna go right here where I've got the white and blend this area in very carefully. And then I'm gonna come back down here, brush off my brush, and then pull this down just a bit. Brush off my brush again and go over this area where I want that highlight. And I'm trying to just go in a back and forth motion here with the brush, just like I did with the pencils. I have my violet blue and I want to add a little bit of this right in here. And again, I'm gonna go in that back and forth motion like I did on this side. I'm gonna go over that with my brush and do the same thing. It needs to be blended out just a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm coming over this with the white before it's completely dry and I'm just trying to blend all these colors together. So now I'm just adding a little bit more of the Persian red and I'm thinking that I might need a red that is a bit darker. So now I have the mild vermilion and I'm just blending some of this color into these other colors. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit down here. This one actually does look quite a bit darker than it does on my swatch chart, so maybe this one will work. Actually, that one made quite a bit of a difference. I like that. Okay, so I think I want like a little bit of yellow or a pop of white right here in this area before I get into the blues and then go outward. I'm gonna add a little bit of white right here. And then this is the lemon. And I think the lemon will transition nicely right into the blues. So I'm going to add quite a bit of this. And I'm doing the same thing on this side. I might need to add a little bit of red over here on this wingspan. And then I'm gonna add a little bit down here just so I've got that color to be able to transition into the blues. Now the iris blue was my lightest blue, so I'm going to start in here with a little bit of this. I'm going to add some down here. And then my next blue was the lapis blue, so I'm going to blend some of that into the iris blue. I forgot to put the iris blue up here, so let me go ahead and add that in up here and blend it into the lemon. And then the lapis blue. I think these colors are fairly close, but I'm gonna blend some other colors into them. So I didn't think that the violet blue really looked good. This is the violet blue here, and it has a lot of purple in it. I'm not sure that I really like it. So I grabbed the iron blue, and I'm gonna try that instead. This color should really help to add the depth and dimension that I want before I go into this section of the wingspan. Again, I'm gonna start with the lightest color and then I'm gonna blend it into 
the blue, and it's gonna turn a little bit green, the blend of those two colors, but that's okay. Oh yeah, this is pretty. Oh, I love that. Okay, so let's come over here and activate these. And I'm brushing off my brush because I want to keep that pop of yellow in there and then go into the blues. And if you notice, I did go back to the smaller brush because the smaller brush is so much easier and it blends the colors together a little bit better. I've never done a bird with the ink tents. This is so different. So here I'm gonna start with the darker ones and get that color down there and brushing off my brush. And then I'm gonna come here over the yellow and blend blend it into that blue. Okay, so I'm ditching that violet blue because the violet blue just is not gonna work. And I'm gonna use this and try to fix a lot of this here so that my bird looks a little bit more blue. So I'm just going over this and creating the extra depth and dimension and adding this color in. This was my iron blue that I just picked up. I'm gonna come over here and start with a second layer. And I'm just going over every one of these sections. Pull this down just a bit because I want to create a little bit more depth over here. Now I have the orange sorbet and I'm gonna blend a little bit of this into the yellow. I'm gonna use the iron blue up here just a little bit, creating a separation between these two wings and then down into the head of the bird. lemon. Okay, so we have to do the outer part of the wings. And the outer part of the wings in the picture that I'm looking at have a lot of like browns and grays and some white. So I think this part is going to be a little bit more difficult, but I went and grabbed the Saddle Brown and I'm using the Dark Mink. The Dark Mink is a color I really wanted to use. It's one of our newer colors and I have the white and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna see how it comes together or if maybe I'm gonna have to blend some other colors into it. I don't know yet. I'm a little nervous about this part actually. <laughs> So we're gonna see what I can come up with. But these birds have so many colors in them. I'm gonna go ahead and just add some white in here so that the white will blend into the other colors. And then the lighter color is the saddle brown and I'll show you what that one looks like. That one's right here. And then this is the dark mink. So I'm gonna start with the saddle brown and just start adding some of this color in here. And I'm leaving some of the spaces for the white. All of the lines and such, I'm gonna try to go over with the dark mink. And I'm trying to speed some of this up and add music because this bird is taking me actually a really long time to color. This is probably one of the more difficult things that I have colored, but you know, leave it to me to try to do one of the more complicated things <laughs> with my Derwent pencils. <laughs> Okay, so let me go ahead and start in and try to activate some of this color here. And I'm just sort of sweeping my brush back and forth because I'm trying to keep some open spaces where I've got white space. And then I'm gonna come back with the darker color and I'm gonna go over it. And I think I just accidentally pulled some of the blue in with the water, that's okay. Now I'm just gonna go over this with a little bit more white and the same thing over here. I didn't get a whole lot of color down here on this wingspan. So now I have my dark mink and I'm gonna start using this color to blend some of this into this other color. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing with this side. And I think this dark mink is making a huge difference. I think this was the right selection of colors, but this is going to help to add all that extra depth and dimension. Still trying to keep some of that white space and just kind of go back and forth and line over these lines just a little bit and blend this color into the saddle brown. Now I have my saddle brown and I'm gonna go over that color and blend some of it together. 
Oh, I think this color combination, just these two colors is so pretty. So I really wanted a bright, vibrant bird. And when I went to go look up the colors of the actual bird and it was just a lot of more muted tones, I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> but I think we actually have the best of both worlds here with the browns. And then I still have my bright, vibrant colors that I love so much. I've got plenty of highlights. And I think that white pencil really helped quite a lot. And now I'm gonna add the white back in. And I'm gonna do the same on this one, and then again on this one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over each one of these, and I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up to music while I do this so that I could concentrate on what I'm doing. <laughs> Now I have my dark mink again, and I'm just going to go over some of the areas where I want to create the extra depth and dimension and really darken the spaces up. Now I have my iron blue, and I'm gonna come back and do the final touches in this part of the bird and on his head here where I've got the blues. I have a nice sharp tip because I really wanna use this color to create a little bit more depth and dimension. And now I have the lapis blue and I'm gonna blend some of this color into that color. I think I want a little bit more blue over here on this end. Now I have my white. And I'm going to blend some of those colors out. And now I'm just going to activate them. Now I have my mid vermilion and I'm going to come back and make some final touches with this color. This was the color that was a much darker red. to create quite a bit of depth and dimension so I'm just going to go down here along this line right into where I had that darker blue and this paper in this book is really wonderful even with all the water and everything it's still allowing me to lay these colors right in here I want a little bit of this just to create a little bit more depth and then just around all of these little pieces here and maybe just a little right here. Now I have the golden yellow and I'm gonna blend that color in just a little bit. And now I am going to activate them with water. Oh wow, look how that color intensifies. So pretty. But yeah, I think that was the darker red that I needed. I think that was a good choice. And then let's activate this over here and then down here along the bottom. And then up in here. And then we're just using the dark mink and the saddle brown to color in the beak really quickly. Okay, so the bird is done. <laughs> And I really love the way that it turned out. I was really worried at the beginning that I would not be able to have it come together the way that I wanted it to. I may grab a white Posca and add a few little highlights to it, but I like the end result as it is now. I absolutely love the addition of these new colors and I'm so happy to have them. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial, please do give it a thumbs up. Everything you've seen me use in this video, I will have in the description box below. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.